Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. And this is a pretty familiar passage for a lot of folks, and so it shouldn't be hard for you to find it. And I actually, I'm going to read from the uh, Revised Standard Version this morning. Is everybody there? Isaiah 40? Amen. Chapter 28, verses 31. Here comes my neighbor. There you go, Jackie Horn. Hey, Jackie. Sister Jackie. Good to see you. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Reading from the Revised Standard Version. This is what the Bible says. Have you not known have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to use for a topic this morning. You got time to wait on God? You know how Red Toy said, you got time to wait on God? If you got time to wait on God, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, you got time to wait on God? Amen. Let us pray. Eternal, most wise God, I just thank you for this message. And I just ask that you just be with me now and help me to bring it to these, your people. Oh God, we need you today. So I just ask that you right now that you would just help us to open our spiritual eyes so that we would see like you see. And God, soften our hearts and open our spiritual hearts so that we were, could receive this morning what thus saith the Lord. Help me, God, decrease that you would increase. Hide me behind the cross so that all they see is you. Help us to get what we need and be changed for having been here this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, I don't know about you, but this week was a really hard week for a lot of people that I know. A lot of people that I know are dealing with some really tough issues and some big decisions. A lot of people are dealing with just depression or anxiety, you know, dealing with not being able to be still and just wanting to just act out or move. I, I gotta make a move. I gotta do something. I know I'm, I need to slow down, but I, I feel like I need to go. I, I know God is saying slow, but in my mind I'm saying go. And I just can't quite get a hold of myself. And I hear the people and I hear the things that they're dealing with. And it's it's life is difficult. Life is not easy. And I'm, I'm guaranteed one thing as a person who brings messages before God's people is that people are always going through something. And most people are going through something difficult, something hard. And, and so and some of the folks I talked to this week were young. And that's one of the things that brought me to this scripture. And I say young as anything under 40. Because <laughs> those of us who are older, y'all, how many people here are under 40? Raise your hand if you're under 40. Yeah, see, you got three young ones over here. Under 40 is young. Over 40 is not old. We're just older than you are. <laughs> We're just, <laughs> anybody that's over 40 is not old. We're just older than anybody that's under 40. And um, so I was just thinking about, you know, all the times this week that I had to, including myself, encourage people, slow down. Let God. Let go and let God. Let God be your God. Because every time we're our own God, we get things messed up. We take off of the road that He was leading us down. Every time we take back our own will and start doing things our way, that's been my experience in life and it's been my experience in observing other people. Every time we start to want to do stuff our way, 
we, we go down the path of destruction and not down the path of life. And this scripture says, don't you know? Like in case you didn't, have you not heard? Don't you know about the God, the Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? And when he, when he says that in that passage, the ends of the earth, I believe he's talking about the entire multiverse. He's not just talking about this planet. He's talking about all of creation. Back then, their understanding of the creation was limited. But today we know that the earth is round, that it revolves around the sun, and that our universe is only one. I'm not talking about the solar system. I'm talking about our universe is only one of a billion. You can't even fathom the creation. And that God is God over all of it. That right there would be enough to blow anybody's mind if you really think about that. The multiverse. If you want to learn more about it, I always encourage people to watch the Science Channel on TV if you can ever get it on cable because it will teach you so much about the creation. And I don't know about you, but for me, when I learn more about the creation and that there are multi-universes in the creation, I just say, look at God. Is there anything more awesome than the God of all creation? Amen? Y'all with me? And it says that that God, the one that spoke everything into existence, and whatever that means, how God spoke it into existence, God is like a mind, and that mind thinks, that's the way I look at it, and then when that mind thinks, that's how things get created. And the thoughts of God, the expressions of God are Christ. And that's why the Bible says everything that was made, was made through Him, and there's nothing that was made that wasn't made through Him. That's the divine mind thinking, expressing, and creating multiverses more than we could ever understand or experience ourselves, but I do believe it. And it says that God doesn't get tired. That force of love and power does not run out. It does not like a gas tank that, you know, after so much time in creation, God gets on empty, and He's tired. And weary. God never gets tired. The force, the power of the Creator, the divine mind behind all that is, says, does not get tired or weary. God doesn't get tired. God is as powerful today. He has no beginning or end. I can't understand that, but I know that that's true. God didn't have a beginning and God doesn't have an end. God just is. That's why He said, My name is I Am. When Moses wanted to say, who should I say is sending me? You tell them that I am, which is is, which means existence, which means now, which means he's the end, in the eternal now, which I don't understand that either. But we're in the eternal now. Y'all know what time it is? What time is it? It's right now. That's what I always say. It's, it's always right now. And God is a right now God. God is in this moment. That's what God is. God is the I am in this moment where we are, and He's always in the now because that's where we are is right now. And we might get tired, and especially folks under 40, not trying to, I'm just trying to encourage you. And I, honestly, young folks sometimes have a harder time dealing with the difficulties of life than so those of us who are older, because you've had less experience, you've had less pain, you've had less time to work it out with God. And the older we get, the more experience we have dealing with pain, the more experience that we have dealing with God to help us with our pain, dealing with God to help us with our temptations, dealing with God to help us. But it's not unusual to see young folks fall first than older folks. And I'm just throwing that out there for free for the young folks because sometimes when you're young, it's harder to get it. It's harder to get it. When you're older, we do get tired. We get tired and we get sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm ready to let God help me. When I'm young, when I was younger, I thought, I can could, I could do this. I got this. As you get older, you realize, no, I don't. I don't have this. And I need God. Amen? And so he, and he talks about that we can't understand it. We just can't understand how it is that God has created everything. We can't understand how God is never tired or weary, that there's no beginning or end where God is. But it does say this. One thing that we do know is that hopefully 
the older we get and the more experience that we have dealing with the difficulties of life, the challenges of life, Sister Lee, the things that you say, I'm still struggling with this. I know that, that I have given my life over to, to true and living God, but I still struggle. I still struggle. And I'm surprised sometimes at the things I struggle with. And, the, and sometimes the young folk, we've got to encourage them to hang on. Encourage them to just wait. You're so anxious to make a move. I'm less anxious than I used to be. I just, you know, I just learned that just doesn't work. I'd be so anxious and I would feel like I just have to say it. Or I'd be so anxious and I'd feel like I just have to go. Or I'd be so anxious, even worse, and send that email or that text. Because I just had to right then. we got to be careful because we can't get those things back. We're so prone nowadays to say things to people through a text message or through an email that we would not say to their face. But we'll type it out and send it to them because we just couldn't wait. We're just too anxious. We just weren't able to just slow down and be still. Amen? Amen. So watch your text messages. Watch your emails. Watch your Facebook messages. Poor people put stuff on Facebook because we just can't stop ourselves. And once you hit sin, everybody saw it. And you try to get it back. But a lot of people already saw it. How many times have we done something and posted it, and you call somebody and you say, take that down right now. Get that off that Facebook right now. You should never have said that. Because we could, they couldn't wait. They were angry. They were in pain. And so this scripture here says, if you will just wait on the Lord, just wait. And I looked it up because my translation in the NIV said, those who hope in the Lord. And I thought, well, which is it? Is it hope in the Lord? Or is it wait on the Lord? And I looked up the original Hebrew word there. And it is clearly says to be patient, to tarry, to wait. So I don't know how they came up with hope in the NIV translation. So that's why I didn't read that. Because it's wait. It's be patient. To slow down. That's right. And be still. Don't make that move. Not yet. Y'all say not yet. not yet. Sometimes you can't make that move, but just not yet. Just be still. It says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And one of the things that I learned about that is that it's comparing us to eagles. That what happens to eagles would happen for us if we would slow down and wait. And one of the things that I learned about eagles, and I didn't, I really didn't know this, and Mother Lynch, maybe you didn't know it either, but I didn't know this, eagles and the creation. It, sometimes they say, if you want to know what um, living beings on other planets are going to be like, look at the other living beings on this planet that are not human and their amazing powers. And the eagle is an amazing animal. The eagle is a beautiful, huge, bird that uses his wings and his tail feathers like they do for airplanes to move them up and down with the wind and the tail feathers spread out and go up and down like brakes. There's all kinds of things about how they fly. But one thing that I learned about eagles this week when I was studying the scripture is they can tell when a storm is coming. They have the ability to know ahead of time that a storm is coming. And it could be that they can feel the air pressure changing. It could be that they can smell the storm coming. I don't know how they do it. It didn't say exactly how they do it. That would be very interesting to know. How can you tell that a storm is coming? But they do. They know. So when eagles can detect that a storm is coming, what they do is they go up to the very highest point that they can find, and they wait. They sit and they wait for the winds of the storms to come. Because the wind comes, and then the storm. Amen? The wind will come, and here comes the storm. And they go up to the very, 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 very highest, highest peak, highest tree, highest point they can find, and they wait. And then when the storm comes, the winds from the storm come under their wings, and they rise up over the storm. That's what eagles do. Eagles don't fly in the storm because they knew that the storm was coming. And they went up to the highest place that there was possible. And it says here that, did you know that an eagle can detect 
When a storm is approaching, long before it breaks, it will actually fly to some high spot and wait for the winds to come. And when the storm hits, it sets its wings so that the wind will pick it up and lift it above the storm. Isn't that remarkable? You've seen them? That's amazing. I didn't know that. I want to be like an eagle. I want to be able to detect when the storm is coming. People got attitudes towards me. I see that stuff is going on that I should have been in, but I wasn't. I see that I didn't keep my word. There's a storm coming. I see that I'm getting involved with some folks that are not good for me. I see a storm coming. If you are living with the true and living God, your God in your heart, you will detect a storm is coming. I just wasted all my money on scratch-off tickets and the rent. I just spent the rent. A storm is coming. I made a mistake. And so it just says here, isn't that remarkable? So while the storm rages below, the eagle is soaring above. It doesn't escape the storm. It simply uses the storm to lift it higher. And it rises on the winds as the storm comes in. What an extraordinary way to deal with adversity. It says this is a wonderful lesson for God's children to learn from the way an eagle approaches a storm. When the storms of life come upon us, we too can rise above them. We can lift ourselves above adversity by setting our minds and our hearts towards God. The storms do not have to overcome us any more than they overcome the eagle. We can allow God's power to lift us above them. Furthermore, the storms or trials of life can actually help us in our walk of faith. This is because they build something in us that will be a part of our lives forever. What you're going through right now, the storm that either you're in or you know is on the way. Some of you guys have family members who are going through stuff out there and you're powerless right now to do anything about it. And that's a storm. It's coming. How am I going to handle it? How am I going to deal with it? What, what you learn from this experience is going to be with you for the rest of your life. And what we would ask that you would think about this morning is as you see that storm coming, the storm is approaching, that you would go high and keep your eyes focused on the true and living God and not the storm. What happened to Peter when he saw Jesus walking on the water? And the, and the rain was pouring down, the winds were, you know, for, uh, making the ocean very rough. And so, but Jesus said, come to me. And so Peter, as long as he was looking at Jesus, as long as he had his eyes on the Lord, he was doing just fine. But the minute he looked down, he saw the storm. All of a sudden, he started to sink. Why? Because the storm overtook him. As long as he kept his eyes focused on God, on the Lord, high and lifted up, he was able to walk on water just like Jesus. And so it is with us. In our, the storms of life, we, we must pray. And we must allow God to lead us and tell us what to do. And God will talk to you in a whisper. Remember we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Many times when God is speaking to you, it will be in a whisper. It will be a small, still voice that says, Haven't you learned that lesson? Have you not gone through this before? Can you apply the lessons that life has been trying to teach you now? Can you? God will whisper that to you if you're listening. And if you'll be still. And if you'll be like the eagle because he saw the storm coming. And he went up to the very highest place. And for you, the highest place is, the, is where you are spiritually. Yes. Everybody is not at the same place. But the highest place for you according to your understanding of God and according to your experience with God in your highest place will probably not be the same as my highest place or Mother Lynch's highest place or Brother Antoine's highest place or Brother George or Sister Jackie. All, the highest place that we can go is how far we've grown. Ask yourself, how far have I grown spiritually? Am I growing spiritually? How high can I go in the spirit? Because wherever you can go, God is encouraging you to go just a little bit further. Grow just a little bit more. But if you'll go to that highest place, wherever that is, and be still. And just say, God help me. And then just wait. 
And then the, the, it says the winds come and the eagle positions his wings so that the wind will lift him up and over the storm. And so it is with us. If we will take ourselves to the highest place of our spiritual understanding, God, as you understand God, we're all, we're not at the same place, but you take yourself to the highest place, Sister Hope, that you can go. The highest place spiritually that is authentic and genuine for you. And then just wait and pray and ask God, please help me. And then he will bring the winds of the Spirit and he will lift you up over the storm so that it doesn't overcome you, so that it doesn't destroy you. Some of us, life can beat us up. And we can feel like we're going under for the third time and we're not coming back up again because we're not lifted up above the storm. When I'm above the storm, I can still see the storm. I can still experience what the storm is doing, but I'm not in it. I'm above it. And so I'm encouraging you this morning, whatever the storm is that's either going on now in your life or you see it coming that you would go to the highest place that you can spiritually, the very highest point of your spiritual understanding, and ask God to open your eyes and open your heart and say, help me to tarry, help me to wait, help me to be like the eagle so that when I feel your spirit coming, my spiritual wings will catch your spirit and you will carry me up higher. And I won't, I won't hurt so much. You might still have some pain, but it won't be as bad as it would be if you were in the storm. You might still have some confusion, but it won't be as bad as it would have been if you'd been in the storm. You might still have some frustration or some anger, but way up high with God, He can help you deal with it as you ride over the storm. You still see the storm? It might still be your responsibility to ride it out, but you ride it out over the storm, not in the storm where you get beat up, broke down. Does anybody here, are you tired of getting beat up? And broke down in the spirit. You want to be free. And so this morning I'm encouraging you just to be like the eagle. And it says that the way that they soar is that they, they use the thermal currents of wind. And these warm air patterns are created by the earth. And they spread their wings and their tail feathers too. And let the wind carry them to new heights. And then when that wind starts to die down, then they glide down to catch another upward thermal. And soaring saves an eagle energy because it does not have to flap his wings as often. You don't have to wear yourself out to, to go with God. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God's not going to weigh us down. God's going to help us to be free and fly and soar like the eagle. And it says even when there is no storm, that, that the, wind, the, the wind patterns, the eagle takes advantage of that and uses his wings to ride on the thermal waves of wind. And when that one starts to die down, he catches another one. And it's something that I just give you to meditate over and to think about and to pray about. And then I'm just going to give you some scriptures as we close that might help you realize where is it all going if I wait on the Lord? Where is it all going? Where, what will, what, how will it benefit me to wait? Because so many times it doesn't seem like it's going to benefit me to wait. It doesn't seem like it's going to benefit them to wait. How is it going to benefit us if we learn how to slow down and I want to give props to uh, Brother Kenneth right there. Kenneth Carr, that brother has learned how to wait. He's been waiting. I give it to you, Brother Cornell, because you've learned how to wait. And you've been going through a lot of storms. Sister Hope, I don't know you that well, but all I know is that you're still here. You know, and you are, you are, God is working with you, and I'm proud of you. I really am. Don't stop. Amen. Don't stop. Y'all say that with me. Don't stop. Don't give up. No, ma'am. Do not do that. And it says that we can use our adversity for gain. We can learn from our trials and grow from the experience and be made better. And in the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, it says this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, because when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. That, that develops your ability to hang in there. Y'all say, hang in there. You've got to learn how to hang in there. Some of us, all we know how to do is give up. 
But this morning I'm saying, hang in there. And then it says, sometimes we will uh, seem to escape trials. And this is from 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And I believe I preached on this a couple of weeks ago. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so you can stand up underneath it. Sometimes we'll, He'll open a door. He'll give us the way out. And, and if we tarry, if we wait on God, He will give us that strength to wait for His direction and His way out. Sometimes we should flee. And in Matthew 10, verse 23, says this, When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And what that says to me is there's some situations you just need to get out of it. You know, you don't need to try to work it out in that situation. That is not a good situation for you. Those people are not healthy for you. What you're doing is very unhealthy. It's taking you in the wrong direction and you need to get out. You need to flee. For people who gossip and slander, people who are negative and backbiters, backstabbers, don't have their mind on anything positive, just nothing but negative. Flee from that. Run from That's what it says here. God will make you like an eagle. You'll fly. You'll catch a wind of the Spirit and get out of there. Ain't no reason to stay in that mess. It also says that other times trials are to be confronted and endured. And this is from 2 Thessalonians. For chapter 1, verse 4, says this, Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith and all the persecutions and trials you're enduring. The people that impress me the most are the ones that have got the biggest, hardest, toughest, junk mess to deal with, and they hang in there, and they keep trying to deal with it. Yes, brother. Huh? That was 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. You hang in there, perseverance. You don't give up. Don't be a quitter. Amen? People say, I quit. I throw in, hey, I can't do this. Don't do that. If it's God working in you, you got to hang in there. And it says that, that you know, you got to confront it sometimes. you got to endure it. There's just nothing to do. You can't do anything about it. You just have to deal with it. There are some trials in life that I wish would just go away. But they don't. They're just there, and you got to deal with it. And in Hebrews... Chapter 12, verse 7, says this. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons, for what son is not disciplined by his father? Amen. And so sometimes we might feel like, God, why is this happening to me? Why do I have to go through this right now? Why I don't want to learn this lesson that life is trying to teach me. This is too hard. But God will say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am here I, God's power is unlimited and His love is unconditional. And so this morning, the decision that you have to wait, my brother, my, you have to make, my brothers and sisters, is do you have time to wait for the Lord? If you don't, you're going to be playing with the enemy who's going to beat you up again. Do you need to, you need to get beat up again? Not, my sister, hope you do not need to get beat up, not no more. You, have you hear me? How old are you? See, she's a baby, 27. Wow, she's probably the youngest one in here. See, the younger you are, the harder it is to get it. Amen. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So do you have time to wait on the Lord? Let us stand and give that God some praise this morning because you're here this morning. Yeah, give him some praise and let him know that we thank you. That we've made it this far. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we know where we are today. And right now, I just pray that each and every one of you would remember this message that wherever you are spiritually, go to the highest point of your understanding and wait on the Lord and the winds of the Spirit will carry you over the storms and it doesn't break you down.